Hello and welcome to Conference Chat. My name is Sonia. I'm the Entertainment Director for the D91 online conference in May. And today I have with me John Drinkwater, our Technical Director. Hi, John. Hi, Sonia. Great to be with you today. Likewise. So tell us, I hear we have a dating app style at the conference. Tell me more. Yes. I'm sorry, that's a slightly mischievous uh, phrase by me. But to be honest, I'm still not really quite sure what it is. Tell us more. Is it a networking app? Is it a messaging app? Is it something to do when you're not in one of the workshops? I don't actually know. What was the, um, the vision behind it? Tell us. Okay, so let's go back to last year, if we may. Last year's conference where we had you out leading the way, which you did brilliantly, by the way. We had what I would describe as a TV experience. We had one fantastically large room. Everybody was in there and we delivered all the content into that room. And that made things easier for the audience, but it also it limited what we could do we were limited to what we could do inside Zoom. So we could have chat, but one chat channel for 800 people was never going to be that interesting. Uh, although, of course, I don't know what private messages were being shared during the mm -hmm. conference, and nobody's ever told me, so I don't know. But however good or bad that is, that won't work this time, because this time we're going to have four different stages. We're going to have lots of Zoom rooms being used. And therefore, you can't hold the same conversation over a day with the same person because you're unlikely to be in the same rooms all the time. So we needed to find something better. So that something better is you take people away from the stages and they go elsewhere to their network and chat. Exactly. When we had a look at what platforms were out there to deliver these virtual environments, we found that the common thing was there was like a, well, I don't know what you could call it, a global chat function. So there was a function on the website where anybody can message in and make comments without them actually being in a particular meeting, a particular event. And that also quite a few of them had the ability for one person to private message another person. And so that was our starting point for designing something to work for our conference. And are we going to go beyond that? So if, you, if, I, if I just met somebody that I wanted to converse with because they, they mentioned something that I'm really interested, do we then just chat or using a Zoom room chat facility or do we go into breakout rooms? That is a fantastic question and I spent nearly two months trying to weigh up the answer. The simple answer would be we would just use one of our Zoom accounts to set up with a load of breakout rooms in there and say guys if you want to go in the chat go in there and that's what a lot of the other platforms have done. They have this auditorium area where you can sit at a desk or you sit at a virtual in a little virtual cubby hole and you have a chat with a group of people around you. But if we have 800 people this year, and I hope we're going to have twice that, I don't see that working with those sort of numbers. I can see it getting very chaotic. One little Zoom room with 100, uh, a capacity of 100 and uh, perhaps 20 breakout rooms is not going to go far when Toastmasters want to go and chat with each other. It doesn't give us the scope we'd have if we were in a physical room and we were all around you know, a coffee bar chatting away. So we really want to emulate that, getting together in the lobby or uh, at a conference, a face-to-face -face conference. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We want to allow people to be able to virtually bump into each other and then have a chat. And we don't want to spend lots of money doing it. We want something that's going to be easy to use and is going to be inexpensive. And the answer is staring us in the face even at this moment? The answer is our own personal Zoom accounts. All you need to do, like we have done today, to have a conversation with another person is for one of you to share your personal connection 
when you go to hold a meeting, you know, you don't book it, you hold a meeting, that's your personal connection, your personal meeting ID. And that doesn't change unless you reset it. So all you need to do to have a meeting between two people is for one of you to give their personal meeting link to the other person. You both click, click on it and hey presto, you're in the Zoom room like we are mm -hmm. and you can chat away to your heart's content. Except of course, that if you've got a free version, Zoom might kick you out after 40 minutes. But 40 minutes with another Toastmaster is quite a long time. We're only used to spend, to talking for five to seven. Yeah. So the more I hear about it, it's as if we are in a face-to-face -face conference, we swap business cards and we have a quick chat and then you can decide to go and have a longer chat or actually say, well, can we chat next, next week? Because I've got all these workshops to go to now. Exactly. And that is why we have a registration form on the end of the ticket, because we believe and I've spoken to other Toastmasters about this as well. So I say we, I mean, lots of Toastmasters I've spoken to. We believe that the best connections are going to be made with people you don't even know. Mm -hmm. And this is why we can't use anybody else's platform. We've had to design our own version because the things we want to know to find people that we don't know is where they're from, what club they're in, what division they're in, what what role are they doing? Personally, I like to speak to VPPRs because I do a lot of marketing and I love to learn the tricks that they're using to try and improve the promotion of my club. So I need to be able to go through a profile list in some way and find the VPPRs and then send a message to them saying, you know, I'm interested in, talk in uh, Facebook ads. Are you doing the Facebook ads? Would you like a chat sometime? And the only way we can do that is to use the registration form to collect the data. To create a profile. So all attendees should really have a good profile so that they can interact better. Exactly. And then people can then connect with each other and find people that have an interest similar to theirs. And then they will connect. It may even be, I haven't decided exactly how we could do this, but it may even be that we can find some equivalent to hashtags. You know, some most common things that people want to talk about, maybe, and we'll post mm -hmm. them somewhere and then people can connect because it's it doesn't mean you have to connect that second, does it? it, it obviously, in a coffee environment face to face, you connect that second face to face because you're there. So you have that conversation. But we don't need to, to have that conversation straight away. You can have the conversation later. You've made a new friend, hopefully or oh, hopefully a friend to be, a new contact. You've contacted mm -hmm. somebody, another Toastmaster with similar interests as you, and that could be the start of a useful relationship for both of you to, to further. And that's why, that's why the dating word does actually work to an extent, because you are looking for people with similar interests. Mm. And the networking app uh, idea works in the same way, because you're looking for people, something similar as you. And... I am under pressure to, and I probably will give in, I'm under pressure to say that we will open that app up about a week, 10 days before the conference. So if people want to start chatting with each other, they'll be able to about a week, 10 days before the conference. We will let it run for about a week after the conference. And then I wait to see who the next district leadership team are because there is a proposal, a virtual proposal hanging in the air to say, if this concept works, we may use it again. We may even make it a permanent feature of Toastmasters. But obviously, that depends on what people think of it and, and where, where they think it could be useful. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm liking what I'm hearing. I think the only thing is there will be so many things happening at the same time. The difficulty for every attendee is going to be what workshop to go to, what keynote to go to, or what um, kind of chat to go to because they've met so many other people that they wanted to learn from. Um, so it, as I think we've all realized this far, um, the conference is so packed with, with content. And I think this, this is just really the, um, this is really kind of making it even more interactive for the audience, which I think is going to be very well received. Yes, I think, I think the one thing, the one bonus of this year has been the fact that because we are virtual, we've had people in our club from the Americas, from the Middle East, from Africa, 
uh, and from even further away. We've had people join us from Australia, which is really confusing on time zone, of course. Mm -hmm. We've had people from all around the world, Toastmasters, joining us, interacting. We've had Toastmasters have gone out and visited clubs all around the world. And that has been the, the only bonus we've had that COVID has given us, this completely new way of communicating with the Toastmasters. The idea of this dating, virtual meeting, networking, whatever we're going to call it app, is to, is to be able to extend that to each club member so that you have the chance to go and speak to people. Uh, but yes, the two days is packed with information. We, uh, we're doing our very best to make sure that as much of it as possible is recorded. Of course, in this internet world, nothing can be promised, but we're hoping that everything is recorded. So the recordings will be available for the people who have tickets. And we will keep this virtual chat open, as I said, for a week before and a week after at least. And then we'll have a look at it. And if the feedback is we want to keep it running, then I'll sit down with the DLT and we'll work out how to build it into, uh, into the system so that we have it running permanently. Fantastic. Well, thank you. And thank you for coming in today. And for those listening, if you haven't got a ticket, please do, because you can see how much fun it is going to be. So this has been Conference Chat. Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone. See you soon. Thank you, Sonia. Bye-bye, everybody.